Now folks, when you have a writer of the Mad Magazine for 20 years who switches across to cricket writing, certainly in for something special. They'd say, either say, no, that's stupid, or they'd say, yep, that's stupid, but stupid, the kind of stupid we want. We chat to author of the 50 greatest Australian cricketers of the last 50 years, and we'll find out who his number one is. There's a bit of controversy. This plus much more on Legends with Bevo. My name is Dan Lipke, cricket writer and comedian, and you're watching Legends with Bevo. Welcome to Legends with Bevo. Thanks to the Coopers and Anytime Fitness Glenelg. Dan Lipke, welcome to Legends with Bevo, mate. Um, tell us all about the Dan Lipke journey and, uh, and how you came up with this great idea of this new book. I, I used to write for Mad Magazine a long time ago. I was a comedy writer. And uh, over the years, uh, Mad Magazine eventually stopped employing uh, comedy writers in Australia. So I, I, kind of, I started tweeting around, um, out about cricket because that, that's been one of my long-standing passions and built up a bit of a following there and eventually got uh, enough people to listen to me that a publisher decided they'd let me publish a book. So uh, I did that last year. I, I published the 50 greatest matches uh, of the last 50 years, or 50 greatest Australian cricket matches of the last 50 years, and uh, that was successful enough. They've, they've let me go again, and this time I've gone for the 50 greatest Australian cricketers of the last 50 years. Yes, yes well, well thanks, thanks so much. much. I've actually got a copy of the, uh, of the the book in my hands here. We'll just um, shut it to the screen. And um, obviously it's a, a very interesting book and controversial in some ways because your number one uh, is actually a female cricketer. Now, Elise Perry, obviously an absolute superstar, one of the best female cricketers in the world and, and certainly the best of Australia in the past, you know, at least 10 years. Um, you've actually put her ahead of Shane Warne and Ricky Ponting, though, in terms of the number one um, 50 cricketers in the last 50 years in Australia. Uh, that's interesting because obviously Warne and Ponting have had amazing careers and, and obviously Perry has as well and still going. But it's a little bit like comparing, say, Serena Williams to Roger Federer or maybe like a Dusty Martin to Aaron Phillips. <laughs> How did you um, go and choose at least Perry ahead of these two absolute legends in Warney and Ponting? Uh, I mean, obviously, it is a, it's a massive challenge to compare uh, the men and the women. They, they, don't, they don't play against one another. So it's, you, you, all, all you can really do, and this is kind of the approach that I put to it, was to pretty much ask yourself which one of them uh, contributes most to the teams that that, that, that that they play for. So which one makes you more likely to win a game if you put them in? And basically, it just came down to Perry's all-round skills. She can win you a game with a bat and she can win uh, for you with the ball. And ultimately, when you weigh that up, they, as you mentioned, all, all those players that you mentioned, they've all had outstanding careers. They've all won their fair share of games. I just felt if if I was if I had to choose a team, not knowing anything else, I, I'd probably take Perry as the one that would give you the biggest advantage uh, over not choosing her. Okay, interesting. Now you've answered it very well, and um, you also put Meg Lanning ahead of Steve Waugh, which is certainly very controversial as well. One of Australia's uh, best ever captains and superstars for Australia. What made you choose Meg ahead of Waugh, uh, Steve Waugh? That that was you know similar rationale, but uh, I, basically Meg Lanning is just a, a freak show when it comes to her ODI conversion rate. Like she's faster than any man in history. She's uh, she basically has got more centuries in her first. I can't remember the exact number. Seventy five games than any uh, any other person, man or woman. So she's she's just ruthless. I, I describe her in the book as, as being like a shark. She just devours bowling attacks. Once she once she gets a start, she just converts like like nobody else in the history of the game. Uh, so and I love Steve Waugh. Steve Waugh was my favorite player when I was a younger man. Um, but I, I'm so sorry, Steve. I had to put Meg Lanning ahead of you. <laughs> no, again, you've answered it well. Um, well said. Obviously, it must be very hard though to choose fifty cricketers both male and female in the last 50 years with a great country because we've had so many. What sort of criteria did you go by when choosing those players, Dan? I pretty much started out. I, I basically looked at the list of Australian test cricketers over that time period. And I, I started with the test cricketers, but the, the, the rationale being that pretty much anybody who's been extraordinary enough uh, to, to, to warrant selection in this list if, if, they, if they've done it mostly by the white ball game, they've probably also been given a run at test cricket at some point. So it's pretty easy to just start with your list of test cricketers. Uh, I did, I did cross-check against the ODI one, see if there's anybody I missed out. No, nah, they've, all, they've all played a test at some point. Uh, and, and then basically I, I just gathered as many stats on all the different formats, all the different uh, things I could think of. And for most of the players, and I must admit, for the women, this is not, not as true. For most of them, I've been watching them for my entire life. I, I know all these players in and out. 
Uh, the women, as I said, they've not been on, you know, not been as easy to watch over the over the decades, uh, sadly. Uh, so that required a little bit more research for for some of the older women. And and basically, you know, weighed weighted all the stats together, went went with my gut instinct on a few of the criteria, and ultimately, you know, ultimately it just comes down to this this toss up. Who, who who would you rather have in a team? Who's going to make you more likely to win? And yeah, it, it, it's all a judgment call in the end. And I, I'm I'm happy with my list. I, I don't expect anybody on earth to 100% agree with the 50 players chosen or the order they're in. But uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm happy with my list. I reckon we might need to do a bit of a bit of a Twitter poll and see uh, what they think, Dan, and have a bit of bit of fun there. It <laughs> should be interesting to see what people think. And yeah, hey, I'm, I'm more than happy to have a Twitter poll. <laughs> be interesting to see as well whether people agree with you on Elise Perry and uh, putting her ahead of Warney and Ponting because. Yeah, there's certainly some legends there, absolutely. And yeah, no doubt, certainly not saying that Elise doesn't deserve it, but um, yeah, very difficult one. And no doubt it's going to cause a bit of controversy. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that piece was published on Quick Info last week and, and it went a little bit viral. I had to turn <laughs> off notifications eventually. It's just, so if it's got people talking, that's fine. That's uh, awesome. And it was Elise, Elise's birthday yesterday too. So I, oh, I think right. a few people tagged her in yesterday as well. Oh, very happy birthday to Elise. And uh, you're also in the past been a, a Nathan Horitz impersonator. <laughs> Tell us more <laughs> about this, mate. That's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not much of a story, sadly. When, when I first started on Twitter, there was kind of the trend at the time to to be, you know, that had fake Steve Jobs who was one of the very early ones. And it was it was a trend to, there was a fake Shane Watson out there and a fake Ricky Ponting. And I just thought, well, <laughs> right, who's the, who's the most boring cricketer I could be the fake version <laughs> of? And and poor, poor old Nathan Horitz uh, got the nod on my behalf. So for, for a long time when I was on Twitter, I, I was just fake Horitz and, um, you know, it worked out a, a bit of an air of mystery. And then eventually I thought, oh, well, this is just getting silly. I'll have to come out and tell everybody my real name. <laughs> what did he think of this? Uh, I'm not sure he completely approved of it. Uh, <laughs> there, there, are, there are a few people got screenshots of him tweeting at the same time as me. So it was like the real Nathan Horitz and then below it, uh, the fake Nathan Horitz, which uh, was always a little bit amusing. But I think he was a bit annoyed by it, to be honest. <laughs> so, so, sorry, Nathan. Uh, I'm sure you can uh, catch up, have a beer with him one day, and I'm sure he'll be fine with it. <laughs> at least it keeps life interesting, like you mentioned. So, And in social media... These days, everyone can just create a profile of, of someone else. I'm yep. sure there might be a Dan, Dan Lipke uh, person out there one day. <laughs> uh, hope, hopefully not, but uh, yeah, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> and let's get back to your Mad Magazine writing because um, yep. it's such a very interesting thing to go from writing for the Mad Magazine to writing, uh, obviously, as, as a cricket writer. Talk to us through your, your time at Mad and um, maybe some of the parodies, some of your favourites there you know, in your time there. Yeah, I, 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 you know, like a, a lot of kids, I think in Australia, I grew up reading Mad Magazine when I was, you know, a, a youngster. I mean, their, their target demographic was always, you know, the eight to twelve-year-old boys, um, and I fit into that. I kept reading after that, and eventually, at some point, I decided I can write as well as this. So I, I, I think this was pretty much before before email was commonplace. So I actually wrote a letter to the editor of Mad Magazine and said, um, you know how do you go about writing for you? And eventually they took me on board and I basically worked freelance for Mad Magazine for about 20 years. I'd just send them in ideas. They'd say, either say, no, that's stupid. Or they'd say, yep, that's stupid, but stupid, the kind of stupid we want. Uh, and then, yeah, so I did that for a couple of decades. And eventually uh, Mad Magazine has essentially folded. There's no more new stuff coming out. Uh, so that, that, that was a bit of a shame, but uh, it was fun while it lasted. And yeah, as, as I said, then I just, you know, transitioned, all right, I, I need to be funny somewhere else. So I decided to be funny about cricket. Yeah, very interesting change of uh, two very extremely different things there. But no, well done on that, Dan. And in terms of the summer of cricket, obviously, we've got a very interesting series coming up, a four test series against India. How do you see this one going between Australia and uh, one of the best sides in the world? It's going to be exciting, isn't it? I mean, they're the two top teams in the world. That, well, they're almost certainly going to be the two teams playing in the World Test Championship final, when, assuming that goes ahead, which the ICC is still planning that, that, that it will. So they're two great teams. Australia is almost impossible to beat at home. Although, having said that, India did beat them at home last time. And Although, having said that, they <laughs> did it without uh, Dave Warner and Steve Smith. So... Uh, I'll get off the fence and I'll say that I think uh, with Smith and Warner, they are, they're, they'll be, Australia will be too strong at home. Cannot wait for that one. Obviously, the uh, the first test starts here in, in beautiful Adelaide a day night. I cannot wait. And, uh, and then great to see as well the Boxing Day Test match, keeping that tradition at the MCG. Yep, yep. Uh, looking forward to all of those. Uh, I, I, be, I 
I, I went to the, the very first day night test in Adelaide and I've been to a couple of others since then, but I don't think I'll be able to get over there this time, sadly. So I'll just have to wait for it to roll around to, to Melbourne and see if I can squeeze into the uh, socially distanced Boxing Day seats. <laughs> yeah, what are they talking about within terms of capacity? Is it potentially 50,000 there or...? Uh, yeah, um, to be honest, I'm not sure. I think it depends on on the various numbers. Uh, a number I heard was 25,000, which would be what quarter capacity, more or less. So yeah, not, not nice and spread out. Obviously, it'd be a different kind of feel having 25,000 on that first day, uh, Boxing Day. But I'm sure, like you mentioned, it's it's just great to have crowds anyway, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's certainly much better than the alternative. Most definitely. And you mentioned at the start as well. You've written a book called uh, "The Greatest 50 Matches in Australia." Um, tell us more about this, Dan, and how we can go about buying this particular book. Yeah, so I wrote that one last year. That, uh, that was uh, a little bit less controversial. P- people don't get quite as uh, uh, worked up about the rankings of various games as they do about the rankings of players. Uh, but yeah, so basically I just uh, I pitched this one. This was the first one I pitched to my current publisher. And I, I, you know, the, the idea was that I, I, would, I would rank the 50 best games that I'd seen. So it was tests or ODIs or... Um, there was one T20 that snuck in there. Um, and basically, I, I, I counted them down, similar way to I do with the current book. And uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, and, you know, the, the obvious candidates were, you know, the tied test, the famous uh, tied semi final in the World Cup in 1999. So all, all, the, all the big games were, were in there. And I, I just, you know, wrote, wrote a little chapter about each of them. So that, that was fun. And, uh, that one's still available. I think you can still order that online. You can get that by going to 50greatestmatches.com. Beautiful. And let's talk about this one, the 50 greatest Australian cricketers um, within Australia. How do we go about buying this one? Uh, well, I've set up a, a nice convenient website for that one too. So if you go to 50greatestcricketers.com, you can get order that one online. Or of course, it, you should just be able to wander into any bookstore and, and pick up a copy in there. Terrific, Dan. We'll make sure we put that on social media and give you a big plug as well and uh, get that on Twitter for you and hopefully get lots of people buying this great book. Great. Thank you very much. I recently read Shane Warne's book, um, No Spin. Mm-hmm. It's an absolute ripper. Just doesn't hold back in terms of his opinions on various things to do with cricket. And one interesting thing he talked about was making Test Cricket four days, um, shortening the ODIs to 40 overs and also having the World Cup for T20 every four years. Three very interesting ideas. I actually agree with all three. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm, I'm less less keen on the four day test thing. I, I I I'm quite fond of the five day tests. I I, I like it. I, I understand the arguments in favour of four day tests. I I just think that there's been so many tests that finish on the fifth day dramatically that that I I just hate to miss it. I, I think the I think the risk of a day being washed out uh, is it's not 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 as big a problem in Australia with the possible exception of Sydney. Um, but it's a, it's a massive problem, I think, in England or even you know some places like Sri Lanka, where you know you can lose a whole day to to rain. And for a four day test, that's twenty five percent of the test, as opposed to the current twenty percent of the test. And I, I, I'd, I'd rather see it stay five days. But to be honest, uh, I, 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 the more cricket, the better. I'm happy to, to go to six days or seven days. <laughs> and the ODIs are, are making that forty overs. What do you think about that? I, I don't mind 40 overs, 40 overs, 50 overs. It was once 60 overs. The 40 overs is fine. I, the, the boring middle overs, you can shrink them down a bit. That's that's fine. I'm, I'm, but having said that, I'm perfectly happy with 50 overs. Uh, I, I don't have any strong opinions on the 40, the 50 over decision. And uh, as as for the T20 World Cup every four years, uh, again, that that's I think that's probably sensible. I think if especially if they get the World Test Championship sorted out properly. Uh, it would be, be quite neat to have a, a World Test Championship every four years, an ODI every four years, a T20 World Cup every four years, and then have a year off for the other one, I guess. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more there. I think um, it's great to have lots of cricket, but you don't want to overdo it because, you know, we've got the the Big Bash, we've got the IPL, we've got these different T20 tournaments around, around Australia and around the world. And then also... I don't know about you, but I just I'm not a fan of the T20 International, so I just find they're a bit Mickey Mouse. And I know it's great people will shut me down and say players want to represent their country, which is understandable. But just as a spectator point of view, just to see these second second eleven um, T20 sides with Smith and Warner and all these other guys rested doesn't really do it for me. Your take on that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I, I could, I could see that. I, I'm, I'm not a strong fan of uh, T20 internationals either. They, they don't, they don't seem to get you worked up quite as much. Uh, I, I'm not not exactly sure why, and, and it may be from what you said, that they do tend to rotate and rest, and you're never quite sure. Like, I couldn't tell you who's in the current uh, Australian T20 
team. Who played the Who played in the last T Twenty match? God only knows. I, I, yeah. I I'd have no idea. Yeah, I'm with you. It's very confusing. So, but certainly something that isn't confusing is your book. As I mentioned before, the 50 greatest Australian cricketers of the past 50 years. Great job, Dan Lipke. Um, keep up the great work. We look forward to what's uh, happening in the future in terms of your books and everything else you're doing. Um, thanks to Julia, uh, Julia Farrakane for organising this interview, which I really enjoyed, mate, and um, look forward to speaking again in the future. Great. Thank, thanks for having me. Sounds so good. Sounds so good.